Okay, welcome. I'm Smooth Braindo. That's a mouthful of a name. I don't say it out loud very often. <laughs> Just call me Smooth. And this is kind of an experimental video s series. Uh, I'm going to be playing my own game and kind of talking about it. Uh, I don't have any plans uh, for this, I just wanna like play one level at a time, talk about what went into making it, and uh, yeah, the history. I want to go back into to w where the game began and sort of uh, have this memory, trip down the memory lane, <laughs> as they say. And, um, yeah, I don't have any plans, I just wanna go into the level and look at stuff and talk about them and uh, play the game like a devel developer plays. Somebody asked on Twitter uh, to show more how, how the developer plays the game, but I'm not, I'm not sure if I can show a lot of that, if I'm going to be focusing on just talking about the game. But uh, yeah, let, let's just see. I'm gonna be picking the second the third difficulty. I just want a little bit of spice in my game, but I don't want it to be like ball breaking hard. By the way, this is a this is a build that hasn't been released yet. It has these loading screens. I kind of like this. Had fun making this sh shader for the screen and writing the law. The ga game has story. It has law, but like it doesn't uh, tell you much. I think I I have a little bit more. To tell through, through these loading screens. Yeah, let's go. <clears throat> so, this is E1M1 Hole in the Sky. Uh, this is the second level made for the game, actually. The first level I made and that sti stuck with the game was uh, Rust Organs, which is the second level of the ep first episode. And right off the bat, we have the Law Bits. Um, the low bits point is that when I started making this game, I thought it shouldn't have story. Uh, at first, I didn't have, want to have any story or lore. It was going to be very basic, like da Doom or Quake, where the bad guy is introduced from the start and you just go kill them and then the game ends eventually. <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I, then I, as I made these enemies and these levels, I started to think that yeah, there is more to tell. I want to talk about more about what what like this stuff is, <laughs> what these monsters really are, and uh, oh look, there's an Easter egg for I and I, the composer of the game. Um, so yeah, I I I thought I'd put this a little bit into like make it sort of hidden what the story is. Like if people want story, they want to go, they have to go look for them. And uh, yeah, that, I think that that worked perfectly. Most of these law bits were written uh, as I made them. I didn't have big plans about them, but eventually, when the episode was about to be finished, I started to get like the pieces started to fall together, like what this stuff really is about and where the play is going and who the main character is, because originally the main character was just this. Just a dude, just a dude with a gun and bad attitude, <laughs> like all, like in all boomer shooters, really. Okay, let's just kill these dudes. There's a new thing that this hasn't been released yet, but this is what I call the mighty spear. It's really powerful, but it's okay because this game is hard and it sort of softens the learning curve as you progress progress through the game and i think i'm going to do something unique for it when you have the melee power up i was thinking it could shoot something forward like a wave that goes goes through enemies but i might actually save that for the final weapon that you get in episode 3 oh. <laughs> look at that these are new things too. I'm not sure when this video is gonna come out, so <laughs> this might not be in the release version yet. You can see from the font too. The font has been upgraded, but not not in the release version yet. Uh, anyway, uh, when this level was about done, there wasn't this lower floor. There was just this apartment, and the game started here. You were just standing 
in front of this and you take a few steps and the enemy is coming. I really like that because I think this game should embrace even more about its to its difficulty. And uh, this, uh, the game was really going to start with this. You take a step forward, the f door blows up and the enemies come running at you. And, that that could have been really fun because some players just gonna be panicking and dying instantly. <laughs> that that creates fun memories. I don't want to believe that people just give up on games I immediately if they die a few times in the start. I I hope I'm not that kind of player. Game has a lot of chipping and a lot of optimization went into this. <laughs> Lots of uh, sacrifices too. There was a lot more effects attached to this stuff, like the, each of these holes that the jeeps had would like spray blood for a while, but I felt that they got a, they, they were affecting frame rate a bit too much if you blow up a huge group of enemies. As you do in this game if you ever use the rocket launcher. <laughs> that game is, that, that weapon is basically like instant kill for most enemies in these games, but I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> About it, I mean. Anyway, I'm going to play for a while. Uh, yeah, this revolver spin, this was like a... This was a very early idea. This was this came from Turok, actually. I, I really liked Turok 1, 1 to 3. And uh, in Turok, if you have the bow out and you pull the, the arrow back and you hold it there, the, the arrow will, would like shine very slightly. You would see like one little sparkle on it. And if you let the arrow go at that moment, it would insta-kill most enemies. <laughs> the game never really tells, the incision tells more, like look at that gun, it's like shines when you, sp sh when you spin it. It's very like obvious that there's something going on there. Yeah, that, that, that's like a fan favorite thing. Most things, that, uh, what, what I'm gonna say, like um, the number number one fan favorite things really are like uh, that this spin and kitty, which is the sixth weapon of the game, a living weapon that you feed blood. <laughs> uh, here's a secret that indicated by this what I call wigglers. <laughs> The, the game says that, says that the walls are festering, so they're, I don't know, they're festering, festering with some kind of growth uh, parasite mega thing, I don't know. Most of the things in the game is left for player's imagination anyway. You can kick these to open them. You get the shotgun in this weird apartment that doesn't have any doors. <laughs> This prop is really old. I made this for some hotel level that I was working on, but that never got into the game. I have, I made like 15, 20 levels that weren't put into the game. They weren't finished, but they were kind of playable still. Um, yeah. These soldiers and these guys really are the first enemies I made for the game, but the soldiers have had a model change eventually. In the alpha versions they, they look different, they had weird syringes on their armor. That came from uh, Quake 4. Quake 4 had these melee enemies, like gorilla type enemies, that had weird glowing syringes on them. And I kind of took that idea to the soldiers. But these guys, only their weapon has changed. They used to have basic like uh, steel axes that they chase you around with and try to hit you. That's why they're really bulky, bulky too, because uh, as melee enemies, I had to give them more more health to make them actually a threat. Now they're weaker. They throw saw blades that bounce around, and they're way more fun. Uh, these corpses, uh, these are called slaves in, in the uh, files. In the very original game, <laughs> very original, in the first ver version, the alpha versions, there were these guys, but they had different textures. They were like cleaner dudes in pants. And uh, the game was gonna be have, uh, gonna have like these enemies that are like the innocent guys from blood that would run around and scream when you shoot at them. I made those guys eventually, but they were very different. I retextured these guys and put, just made them into 
jibbable, uh, fun little red dudes. <laughs> There's a one-up. Is there something else to talk about before I pick that up? Because the one-up is one big, big topic. Okay, let's grab it. So one-ups, they're basically this. Um, it was a reaction though, something that I couldn't make because uh, when I was making this game, I had many levels made, uh, like three levels that were going to be in the game, but really didn't end up being in the game. And uh, the game was so far made, and I had not thought uh, thought about like save system at all. So. I was kind of panicking, I didn't know what to do, because I, uh, this game, by the way, is my first like big project, like programming-wise. I'm an artist, but uh, programming-wise, this is like the big fir first project, so, so, so I had no experience in making save systems or anything like that. So, um, uh, I, I basically had to make a sacrifice and say, nope, there's not going to be any, any sort of saving in this game. And, the one-ups are like a reaction to the, uh, it. I, they they save you from one little hit. Uh, you can see see on the heart. You have I have now one uh, one life, and if I take a little shot, the game goes into slow motion. Uh, I get 75 health back, and uh, I'm go I'm in god god mode for like I think it's six to eight seconds. So player can like clean out the worst enemies quickly after they lose a life, and the game sort of balances balances itself out. I think it's a shame. Like in the next game, probably in season two, uh, probably another game, I want to have some kind of save system that isn't just saving between levels. At least some kind of checkpoint system, unless I may make something like. Uh, Dark Souls that actually has like bonfires and no mid-level saving at all. Everything respawns, props like breakable props come back. These are re really nice looking jibs, nice. Well, anyway, let's 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 get going. This this can be broken, by the way, and it clips through the floor. <laughs> Don't tell the QA team. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm gonna just do this part without talking too much. Ooh. <laughs> I'll play normally until I get to the indoor area. Grab this power up. This power up makes your weapons more powerful and faster. Uh, the more you do damage, but it's kind of finicky right now. You have to use this to really build it up, and it's ridiculous. Look at this. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I stop here. Um, so when players player comes out, they start seeing this stuff, weird, rusty meat stuff. Most of this stuff is actually intentionally. Oh, hello, you're still alive. Intentionally made, uh, nonsensical. Uh, growth, the, this stuff is called growth, this is like a reac uh, reaction to me wanting to make a game that's uh, game first, always. So, uh, when growth builds this stuff, this this stuff is made of flesh, but it's Im Im it imitates m metal, it's kind of a weird idea. But, um, it, uh, it doesn't need to make sense, that's the point. I can just make any kind of structure from this stuff and as long as it's fun to play that's that's all it matters really and uh yeah that's that was the point because when you play doom quake uh, doom is supposed to be like a space station but the levels never make sense they're just weird tech labyrinths and quake is just weird brick labyrinths <laughs> basically so 
in uh, incision it's weird rust flesh labyrinths when there's that like there there are areas like this that try to be try to imi imitate real stuff but i don't put that much uh, emphasis on that stuff like uh it's still gamey these apartments they don't make sense like apartment has a bathroom but no bedroom no kitchen nothing <laughs> there's lamp there's trash that's like my old apartment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this version tells you to use the mighty spear now. That's why there's two tur turrets now. But yeah, um, what can I talk about next? Let me just get up here. This weird eleva elevator shaft. Little bit of telling people to double jump. You can't do this without double jumping. Double jump, yeah, m movement and double jumps, that's probably something to talk about. Um, this game goes fast. You can go real fast in this, but there's not like a build up speed, like uh, if you bunny hop or something, you don't build up speed at all. It always goes from you, you either to do the usual speed or you do the fast speed, and that's your limit. Because it's all non-physical, I would say. There's no phys physics going on here. This is just curves going up and down, determining your speed. Uh, jumping is the same. Jump is a curve. There's no physics. And um, double jump has, over the de development, before the early ac access release, it, it constantly, constantly got like lower. You don't get that high anymore with double jumps, but the point is that it keeps you in the air for a while, so you can sort of glide around. Crazy jumps were in the game originally, like crazy double jumps, but they just broke the level so easily, I, I had to limit it constantly. We got the machine gun here. It's a fun thing. Um, there's enemies here too. Yeah, this gun has had like 20 sounds over time. <laughs> Two models and 20 sounds, I'd say. Like, I constantly, constantly try to find a good sound for it, but like, it's so hard to find a good machine gun sound because you don't want it to sound like a cannon, but you don't want it to sound lame either. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that's been a... Oh, fuck. That's been a struggle. Okay, let's go quickly back up. I kind of want to cheat, but I'm not going to cheat. I don't, I don't want to ruin it. I can show some cheats eventually, but not now. That was gonna, there's two secrets. Okay, I'm going to cheat. I, I'm going to get that one secret that requires me to backtrack second time. <laughs> Here's the first secret. The rocket launcher is here for a weird... I, weird reason, uh, I was playing Duke Nukem 3D and I really liked that the first level gives you a rocket launcher <laughs> instantly. And it's like a really easy secret, so this is, isn't that easy secret to find, but it's still the same, same idea, kind of. Here's the second. Yeah, get some ammo. I'm gonna no clip to the rooftop. No need to make this boring for the viewers. Um, yeah, this apartment building was fun to make. The fact that it's it floats... If I remember correctly, the real reason for that was because I hadn't... Oh, hello. Hadn't made that many, like, uh, uh, real places yet, like city stuff. So I thought, I'm not going to be able to make a uh, believable like cityscape or townscape so I made this place float <laughs> and it actually spawned this interesting story thing that the main character is in his own apartment and uh, like a prisoners prisoners of the sort of they they took the apartment out of the ground and it's floating here now and uh, I think that's really neat. It instantly makes you wonder, like, what the hell is going on? This stuff too, like... 
yeah, <laughs> this weird meat stuff that you cut and stuff happens. <laughs> uh, the tumors were fun because uh, they are sort of a reaction to... I'm constantly, constantly saying reaction. They were a reaction to me trying to innovate forcefully. And that means I didn't want to make this game the kind of shooter where you get a red key, blue key, yellow key and then open doors. In retrospect, I should have made keys, but <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to make it something that fits the game's theme. Incision, you cut something, and it uh, it can be anything. Like it, it can be something that lowers a bridge or disables force fields or opens elevators or anything. It doesn't have to be just that one thing that opens a door, like in Doom, for uh, for example. And um. Okay, that's bullshit because you can do more more stuff with keys in Doom anyway. But um, yeah, lots of this game was made just improvised. I I had no bigger plans. I I, I was just making stuff here and there, like weird monsters. Look at this dude, weird monsters, and uh, seeing where the project goes. And I was just laughing my ass off making st making these monsters. Like, <laughs> look at this weird dude. This pork faces in the ceiling spitting spears that explode with de delay if they hit the surfaces. <laughs> like, I don't know, I just made it and it, uh, then I just balanced it to fit the, fit the game and screw the need for like huge development documents telling every little detail for the game before it's even in development like you don't need that bullshit, just have fun. You need intuition, intuition is the key. Uh, as you make a game, you need to have in intuition to know like what, what works and what doesn't, and if you know that, that's enough. Oh, hello. Um, even this like this art style like, came, came through uh, uh, improvisation, because in the old... Uh, sorry, I'm stuttering, stuttering constantly. <laughs> In the old um, alpha versions, the game was very different. It was way cleaner, way more like human factory team with monsters or like soldiers more like. It was going to have like this evil corporation stuff with super soldiers and you, you're you like some kind of rebel and <laughs> boring shit like that. <laughs> shit you've seen like million times in boomer shooters already. And uh, no, I wanted to make something different. And, and uh, when I was playing with lighting and pro post-processing stuff, I realized that this game looks way better if you do stuff like this, like glowing lights and smoke and darkness and rust, and uh, I just started to slap that stuff together, and the monsters kind of came nat naturally after that. Most of the enemies after the those experimentations were, like, way worse looking. I mean, like, <laughs> not literally, but, like, more like body horror and the story came from the body, body horror and in, improvised levels like this one and the second one. The second one is all about that gore and uh, gore and rust, even darker like this. And um, yeah, I think that was all of the, that I had to say. I didn't really rehearse this much. I did a few recordings that weren't weren't very good. I I hope this this is more en enjoyable to listen than than I don't know something else. <laughs> I was gonna say something smart, but I forgot. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna cut this face, another incision thing in this game, and I'm gonna cut the, cut the video tear. So, if you stuck with, with this video all the way to the end, thank you. Spread word about incision. I, I don't market this game that much. I, I think it, it's a su success for me, but I, yeah. More success is always welcome. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a shill or anything. So, um, yeah. Fuck these things, in particular. <laughs> Wee. And these things. Okay, okay, I'm gonna end the video here. <laughs> I'm gonna record the second one real soon. Okay, bye.